welcome to the next episode of Infi Ed Talks, a new series of the Emphasis Foundation USA. My name is Kate Maloney and I am the Executive Director of the Foundation. Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Charles Best, who is founder and CEO of Donors Choose, the leading platform for giving in U.S. public schools. Um, proud to say that Donors Choose is also a partner of the foundation as we work together to advance access to computer science and maker education across the U.S. So Charles, thank you for being with us. Thank you, Kate, today. for having me. Uh, so like great organizations start, it's usually born of an idea or acknowledging that there's something missing, um, a problem to solve. Yeah. For you, that was when you were a teacher in the Bronx. Um, if you could share with us how Donors Choose came to be. Yes, I um, was a history teacher at a public high school in the Bronx for five years. And during my first year of teaching, just as you said, I felt something missing, and that was the ability for my colleagues and I to give our students the books that we wanted them to read, to be able to take them on a field trip that we envisioned, to be able to do a science experiment that just required a couple microscopes. My colleagues and I would spend a lot of our own money on copy paper and pencils, but then we would sit in the teacher's lunchroom talking about these books, that field trip, that science experiment that we wanted our kids to have, but that we couldn't personally afford to cover going into our own pockets. And that was really when the idea just kind of occurred to me that there were people out there who would want to help teachers like us if they could see exactly where their money was going. And that's how Donors Choose was born. So that was almost 20 years ago. Uh, you were maybe one of the first crowdfunding vehicles to, to fundraise for teachers, but now we have countless others. Uh, so can you share with us what you think is the, the secret sauce or what makes Donors Choose a unique organization? To your point, when DonorsChoose.org began, crowdfunding was years and years away from even being a word. I think there were a couple musicians in the late 90s who went directly to their fan base to get their next album funded. Mm -hmm. So they might be the inventors of crowdfunding, but I don't think there was any website where they could do that uh, uh, yeah. rallying of their community. And So Donors Choose might really have been the first to show that this model of people on the front lines coming up with a project idea, and then people, no matter the size of their wallet, being able to finance that project or donate to that project, I, I think we were, we were able to show the world that, that the model could work. And yet, there are two ways that DonorsChoose.org is really different from the hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands, of crowdfunding sites that have launched in, in the years since we began. One of those differences is that DonorsChoose is not primarily a way for you to, as a teacher, to fundraise from the people you know. Most crowdfunding sites out there are great tools to fundraise from one's personal social network. At Donors Choose, only 25% of the dollars given to classroom project requests come from teachers fundraising from their networks. 75% of the dollars given to projects on our site come from donors who have never met the teacher and students whom they are supporting. It could be someone giving $10 to a classroom project that they found after doing a search for Shakespeare projects in New Orleans. It could be Infosys Foundation USA supporting computer science and maker education for teachers and students whom you, Kate, uh, have not personally met. And that's in turn why Donors Choose has become a magnet for teachers in low income and rural communities because a teacher does not have to have friends with money or students' parents with money to bring uh, a classroom dream to life. The, the second difference, which I'll mention just in one sentence, is that because it's people giving to teachers and students they've never met. We have to hit a much higher standard of accountability and transparency, which is why we do not pass through cash when a project is funded. Instead, we fulfill the project, as you know, uh, even if yeah. it's a field trip uh, or a professional development experience to a Pathfinders Institute, we are paying the transportation agency, the bus, the destination for that experience. So were the first teachers to set up projects, all of those from your school in the Bronx? Yes, they were. Okay. Yes, they were. All right, and now, if I'm correct, you're in 85% of public schools? That's right. And so how many, just scale of donors, what are we, what number across the U.S. are there yeah. people um, who are giving to projects that are on your site? Well over three million people have contributed to classroom project requests on our site and they, okay. together with our corporate and foundation partners, have given well over $800 million to okay. projects that have delivered books, robotics kits, butterfly cocoons, field trips to uh, well over 20 million students overwhelmingly in low income communities. 
Okay, that's impressive. Thank um, you. And anyone who's watching can also go on Donor Shoes and probably maybe even find their teacher from they their sure K through 12 journey. That's okay. right. Um, so we talk a lot about the promotion of diversity and inclusion. Mm. It's a core tenant of the foundation and you are really living and breathing that value. Uh, so I'd love to know a little bit more how that philosophy makes its way into how you shape your board and how you work with your staff and, and why that's so critical. It's really important for the students we serve to be able to see themselves in the Donors Choose team mm -hmm. that's working behind the scenes to bring their teachers classroom project requests to life. Uh, so that means that we strive uh, to be a place where more than half of staff, more than half of leaders, more than half of our board are people of color. We're not yet, we're, we're almost there actually on just about all of those counts, uh, but we feel like we still have work to do. Um, nearly 80% of both our donors and 80% of our teachers are women. And so therefore wow. for us, um, a 50-50 gender balance has to be considered the minimum floor uh, yes. for representing uh, our, our user base. So for those reasons, uh, diversity is really uh, important to us. Um, a few months ago, we also started enabling our teachers to optionally, privately share their gender, their race, the college they attended, whether they were first in their families to graduate college and the year they started teaching, to enable people to specifically support underrepresented teachers, whether that's teachers of color, whether that's women math and science teachers, uh, philanthropists can now specifically target uh, uh, teachers who are underrepresented. The other thing I picked up on was this space you have set aside for saying thank you. Yes. So as a donor, um, I, you know, a donor foundation, I can appreciate when our grantees say, you know, we so appreciate the resources you gave us, or yeah. teachers at Pathfinder say, you know, this has changed our trajectory. Why, what is that? What yeah. was, um, where did that come from? Why is that such an important part of the Donors Choose model? Yeah, well, we hope that gratitude is built into our culture as well as into our program model. The simplest reason why gratitude and saying thank you is important to us is because we really believe in showing every donor, even if that donor has given one dollar to a classroom project mm -hmm. request on our site, we want them to see and feel the impacts that they had. And uh, that's why we provide a, a mechanism for the teacher to quickly pen uh, an initial thank you note yep. when their project is funded, to write an impact letter a couple months into the project explaining what students are learning and, and kind of showing rather than telling their gratitude mm -hmm. to their donors. And then students write their donors thank you letters. Um, and those go to all donors who give $50 or more to a project and who uh, opt to share their mailing address. And years ago, I can remember, we once surveyed our teachers and asked them if this um, exercise in student thank you letter writing was at all a burden. Mm. And any number of teachers wrote back, almost rebellious, saying that if we ever removed that part of the model, they would still have their students writing thank you letters because when a kid is writing a letter to a real person who did something real for their classroom, yeah. they often care about their communication, their writing, their spelling, their grammar, uh, more than when they're filling out a worksheet uh, for their teacher to grade. And, um, and now there are all sorts of uh, studies showing that when people do express gratitude, when they say thanks for something every yeah. day, that they become even happier people. So we feel like the, the program, the value of saying thank you has all kinds of uh, repercussions that, that are really great. Right? Um, well, a little bit pivot to the foundation and yeah. our mission. So, um, as I said in the beginning, we're committed to expanding access to computer science and mm -hmm. promoting maker education in the classroom. So I'm wondering from your perch, if you're seeing trends evolve where teachers are starting to shift the asks that mm. they're making or mm. the projects they're putting on your platform, mm. are they having more of a maker mm. element to them? Are they wanting to bring in 3D printers and mm. robotics? All mm. the stuff we love to support. Mm. Are, you, are you seeing that on the ground in these from teachers? We are, right now, there are more than 10,000 classroom project requests live on our site in need of funding that feature computer science and or maker education. A real portion of that volume is thanks to Infosys Foundation USA for supporting just such projects on our site. And teachers have responded and, and it's now a major and growing category. Within that category, uh, there are hundreds and hundreds of project requests seeking 3D printers and okay. one of our exciting discoveries was that 
um, many, many of those 3D printer requests are not categorized primarily as math or science projects, but as art or music projects, as okay, history great. projects, as literacy and language projects. So we're seeing teachers use 3D printing to bring not just math and science to life, but to bring all subject categories to life. We're also seeing um, a lot of teachers looking to blend the physical and the digital worlds. We see lots of requests for Osmo kits, which enable uh, someone to kind of activate real world physical objects, um, but to see them manifest on a screen and, and vice versa. Um, there are all That's sorts so of really, cool. really exciting things that we see in this category. Well, I wonder too if teacher, I hadn't thought of, about this before, but if teachers can go on the site, see what other teachers are doing in their classroom, I would think there's also yes. a ripple effect there. That's exactly um, right. So you are coming to the 20th anniversary of Donors Juice. Yeah. So it's a time I'm sure you're reflecting. Uh, I'd love to hear the thing you have learned or what stuck with you that maybe was a, mm. a pain point but you turned mm. it into something beneficial and then maybe some sense of where you want to take the organization. Well when Donors Choose Org began when we were operating out of my classroom we had um, taken on what looked like a very labor intensive model where we were vetting and authenticating each teacher's project before posting it to the public site. Yeah. We were buying the stuff and getting it delivered rather than handing out cash to the teacher. We were processing thank you letters from students and photographs from the classroom. And when funders heard about this operating model, they, that many of them thought that that sounds totally unscalable and like a huge amount of work on yeah. each project. This was during the time in 2000, 2001, when eBay was ascendant and Amazon was considered to have a more anachronistic business model where they were getting in between uh, the customer and the, the provider to kind of, and, and doing the shipping and fulfillment themselves. And so it, it was thought that Donors Choose um, ought to have a more hands-off model where we would not um, guarantee integrity and, and accountability uh, the way we were. And we have been able to make all that work yeah. scalable and to actually be at once a high accountability and high efficiency org at the same time. But it took us years and years before we could actually say that our model for vetting, fulfilling, and processing feedback had in fact become scalable and, and was more than just a lot of tender loving care mm -hmm. for every single project on our site. Um, so yeah, that, that uh, is one thing that was uh, uh, kind of a pain point and has become an asset. And then I think we're most yeah. excited about how our data can be used. Okay. Um, more than half a million teachers have gotten funding for more than 1.3 million classroom project requests on our site. And we have a mountain of data for each of those 1.3 million projects. And by opening up that data, we hope to let policymakers, concerned citizens, media outlets, anyone who's curious, uh, hear what teachers are trying to tell us yes. about the technology that they most need, the tactics that they think are most effective, the topics that are on their mind, and, and kind of enable all of us to keep our finger on the pulse of classroom teachers in America. I want to say thank you for oh, coming. Thank you, Kate. Um, Donors Choose being a great partner of the Foundation for our Pathfinders Institute, which is, as you know, one of our signature um, programs that we hope hundreds of teachers continue to benefit from. So yeah. we want to continue with that. But oh, thank, thank you. you we're so coming. grateful for your partnership.